All right, welcome back to the shop. I left this in clamps overnight while I'm unclamping this. Gonna talk about a few things safety related to routers as well as how we're gonna clean this lid up. We'll move to the table saw as well and actually cut the lid off the box. That's all we're gonna do today. Got some feedback on a couple of the videos. Um, somebody told me to STFU. I've never heard you talk so much in my life. And uh, so I said, you know, eat a dick. Um, and he knew it was with all respect. He was just giving me a hard time. Um, and then also some good feedback I got was keep them a little shorter, which I actually like. I prefer that. I have trouble editing these things. I'm, I'm learning that. So, um, we've got a Bosch, we've got a DeWalt, we have another Bosch. As you can tell, this little guy is a lot smaller than these guys. I'll tell you as a beginner, if you want a handheld router, go with this. The reason why is it might be small, but when it comes to freehand routing, it's good to get comfortable with what you are doing and there's no better way to do that with something that is just i mean way more comfortable to handle like this guy put some weight this guy we can just toss it around um and it's still got a great plate to work with those for you for a second um so it, if you want to get comfortable with handheld definitely go with that um now Bosch right here um uh, is more precise than a DeWalt now DeWalt's are great and we're going to use a DeWalt today and each of these are plunge routers as well that are that have their own jigs dedicated to each one now, I don't I don't use this in the same jig that I use this because then you have to switch plates from a terrible pain in the ass. Um, and really, they both are variable speed, all three of these are, which is good. That will allow you to control the RPMs better as you move through your piece, or if you're working with harder or softer woods, larger bit diameters, lid turned out really nice. I don't work for any of these companies. This is a more precise. After you lock it, you can make micro adjustments. The DeWalt, once you lock it, you cannot fine tune. And we talk about fine tune, I'm not talking an, an eighth of an inch. We're talking down to, you know, the 164th of an inch. And that matters sometimes in a lot of these projects. If you have an error that's off by 164 and you have four different sides that you're working with depending on the bit and what you're doing, that actually adds up to a sixteenth of an inch, if my math is correct off the block. So it's very important. However, what we're doing today, this is important. I spoke about safety. Everybody likes that I talk about safety and then I don't actually use half the stuff that I recommend. Somebody laughed at some PM and said, I love it that you said that Spanish cedar is toxic to work with. You should wear a respirator and then melt. Well, you know, I have dust collection. Um, and I breathe through my nose, not my mouth. I don't want to catch all this stuff. We are going to kick up some dust, which is why I'm using these. I also have air filtration up there on the ceiling. We're gonna use this DeWalt router with the flush trim bit. It is unplugged. Never ever touch this when it's plugged in. All right, we've got the right height, that ball bearing. This actually has the Bosch bit in it. They make high quality routers and bits. It's again, I don't work for Bosch. I don't work for DeWalt. I just have experience with the tools. Now one thing that's important, we're going to freehand route. 
I have my drop cord from my ceiling pulled to just the right area. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and plug her in, but that gives my cord room on the bench because as we move through this piece, all right, we're actually gonna need that cord as we come around, all right? We're gonna want that cord to stay the hell out of our way. So you don't want too much cord. That's why some of it's left down here. But in case I need it, it's right there. The plug-in's just right here. It's the safest place to work. If I have a large project, I'll actually just set something on the floor, use my feet as the hold down for it. In this case, I'm using a towel. Um, it's gonna serve its purpose. We're gonna take it nice and slow with this. One more thing with router safety before we fire her up. I'm gonna be down here working with this. I will tell you, buy a dedicated jacket or vest. These guys are gonna get you killed. So I'm gonna pull them out as far as I can. And I'm actually gonna just cut them off. I'm gonna show you that I cut them off. Went to my handy dandy cart. Because, for one, I don't think it's gonna rain in my shop. And if it does, I got bigger problems than wearing a hood over my head. Um, but this string, it's junk. Um, it, it's gonna, if it catches in the router bit, it's gonna suck you in before you ever knew it happened. Um, now, one thing, as you go through these things, you're gonna want cheat sheets. I have a cheat sheet for freehand routing. A router table is very basic, all right? You feed from right to left. Now, on a handheld router, we're gonna do the outside. We're gonna go counterclockwise. We're gonna start from here, we're gonna move through here. Uh, if you were doing an inside edge, you would go clockwise. I write it down, this thing, I, I have tons of notes in here. Um, handheld riders, I haven't had to write another note, so that's why that's there. And we're going to kick up some chunks. So I actually have a dust collection system. I'll show it to you uh, real quick. This is for actual air circulation for dust in the air, which is why if you've seen in the shop, I have a, a fan mounted up there, up high so it can push my dust over here and I have one in the corner that's angled partially up so any dust that tries to come down, actual true fine particles, get shot back up to circulate in the top of my shop. There we go. It's set to cycle air just right, very quiet units. So we're gonna put this towards us. The bit is not gonna be touching the piece yet. Um, we are gonna turn it on. Nice little hum. Move it down. Gonna set that out of the way. As you can see, we kicked out the chunks. Got it all over my pants. Who cares? Shop pants. All right, so we're nice and we're flush. If you remember that overhang from before, that is gone. Um, it is flush now. We didn't burn on the piece, which is awesome. If you noticed, it went backwards real quick. I did not like how this corner was was flowing for some odd reason I, I didn't have enough inward force uh, maybe I was just scared to pull it towards me too much I, I don't know um, it happens scary ass tool it's 
one of the most unforgiving tools. All right, so I spoke about masking tape, but I haven't used it yet. I'm actually gonna mask and tape this off because we're actually gonna cut this lid off. And I know about where I need the tape. And this tape is actually gonna prevent some tear out as well as it's gonna allow me to mark on it because when you're making a box you don't want your lid too big and you don't want it too small so I'm not wearing my belt today I have all the tools that I need right here so we're gonna grab this I already got a pencil all right so the overall size of this box now that we've cut it off is six and a quarter now we're gonna lose one eighth of an inch when we take this um, off, but I'm not worried about that because we're gonna measure from the top. I've right, got a half inch top and I typically like to keep the lid um, to where you've got a nice, you know, one inch um, to play as an actual inside uh, of the lid. You'll see what I'm talking about. Since we're gonna put Spanish cedar in this, we really need to take into account that half inch plus the quarter inch lamination that we're gonna do on the inside of the lid. So I've got three quarter inch of that top, including the actual top, it's not gonna be usable. So when I wanna go an inch, we're actually going to take off one and three quarter inch. And so I'm actually going to mark that on here on the outside edge. Um, my reference point for zero is right here on this square. Um, it's on right here. If I went from over here, we'd start out and it'd be a one and a half inch. So we're going to go to one, three quarters. So that will give me... One inch to work with is that inside lid. I'm gonna mark the saw blade on here and where it should come out. I'm also gonna mark that on this outside edge so that I can actually look at it and see it when we take it over to the table saw. I'm gonna color it in a little bit. All right, and we're done. We're done marking up. We truly are. Um, take safety with the router. I didn't even put on my safety glasses. Um, but I recommend that you do. I didn't take any chunks to the eyes. So we're good. So I already have everything set up. Now, is what I did was, if you did not know, a piece for cabinetry or um, helping build large furniture. This is a very nice um, piece, but it's not solid hardboard 100%. Um, it's manufactured in bulk, but what you buy at the store in a sheet good is actually undersized, which is why they sell, you'll see, undersized router bits. You wonder why the hell do you have an undersized router bit? Well, it's designed for these. Um, so I actually set my saw blade height to the height of that because this is shy three quarter inch. And we're working with a three quarter inch box. Now I have lined the saw blade up already. And you might wonder, you know, why are you gonna work from this side? You know, there's that risk for the fingers. The reason why, if I turn this around, I'm gonna put so much pressure on it, like if I move that fence out, and I'm gonna put a lot of pressure, and it could, since this is gonna be a heavier piece than this off-ball piece, and I've done it the other way, it will cause the edge not to be as fine. One thing we're gonna do is as we put it through the saw blade, 
We're going to back out of it after the first quarter inch to make sure I haven't gone through it. I'll cover that when we go to actually cut it, cut it off. The idea is we get as close to cutting it off, but still keeping the lid actually attached. Because if you cut out all the material, by the time you get to the last two cuts, you're going to push in and be binding the blade. You don't want to do that. Your top will be all cockeyed and it won't be a true edge to make the box look the way that it should. Kick on some dust collection here. I keep the flashlight. The blade was a little too hot. If you notice when I was doing this final, I put all my pressure here so I didn't push in. That's why we cut it up. I cut it this way. It's because now I can just take her. Our lid comes off. And actually I don't have to take it to the other table at all. Uh, but I'm gonna quickly bring over my saws that would do this. I got just the, I mean, we took off a tiny ribbon but it kept that lid intact and that's what matters um, and I have the tape so there's no tear out on there um, let me grab these saws real quick because typically is what I would do is actually possibly cut that lid off the final way with the flush cut trim saw and there are several of them out there Also, I put a secondary marking on here so I know which one was the base of the project. Um, this is a Harbor Freight Special. I use it all the time for stuff like this. Um, I've been using it for years. It's still straight. It's made to flex. It, it's good to just get you by. This is a Japanese saw. It's got fine teeth for uh, hardwoods. It has a coarser for softwoods and the way, reason why I like Japanese saws is because it works on a pull action not a push action so when you come through here it's actually pulling out the material this way and to the American way of putting the force into it it's more natural this way and this one for larger projects same has teeth on both sides plate is the blade is interchangeable um, this one is actually designed for if I wanted to, you know, make a corner cut real nice and stable, um, it has a, an edge on here to keep that blade from, from moving. This is an Irwin, uh, has disposable blades. Um, it's more for contracting stuff. Now I'll use it for a quick dowel if it's the handiest one. Get back in there. Um, however, you know, this would be typical for like if you were doing some trim work somewhere for a floor. I could literally just, it's not gonna scrape my, but I can use that like this to cut maybe a door jam or something like that with laying flooring. Um, so I definitely wanted to show you these saws. Uh, 
it's important that you store your saws, your, your hand saws, so that you don't ruin blades. Blades get expensive, and you don't want them bent, you don't want teeth all broken um, or, or bent. Um, the opposite direction or something like that. Um, if you start using hand tools, you'll understand exactly what I'm talking about. Um, they've been worth every penny that I've spent. I appreciate everyone for watching. On our next video, we're actually gonna do the hinges and we're gonna route a couple nice finger inserts so that we can lift this slit up once hinged. Someone did ask me if this really is uh, for a customer. It's not. I've always wanted to build a zebra humidor, so I'm building a zebra humidor. Um, and then I'll put it up for sale. If you've been following the video, I'm going to give you a promo code if you really do want it. Um, because I'm not all about chasing all the paper. Um, some are out there, and I'm not disrespecting them for making a living off of it. Um, I just truly enjoy what I do. Um, so stay tuned for the next video. Thank you all for watching. Greatly appreciate it. Have a great day.